If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this awesome episode of Mind Pump. It was awe-inspiring. We talk about Justin's storytelling I have a gift. Ability. Yeah. Sal's rambling. We talk about how uh, much me and Adam, I threw you in there, buddy, mm. uh, have a tendency to maybe ramble, um, and the importance of chemistry between hosts. We knew Mind Pump would be excellent because we were all super attractive to each other mm. when we first met. We were. Then we get into the questions of this Q&A episode. The first question was, is there such a thing as squatting too low? Believe it or not, the answer may surprise you. You're going to have to listen to this episode to find out. How low can you go? Then we talk about a gentleman who does not like treadmills and ellipticals, but loves going out and playing sports. How do they compare? Which one's better for fat Mm. burning? Then we answer the question about whether or not women should eat and train differently based on their cycle, or as Adam liked to call it in this episode, Period time. Yeah. <laughs> then we, Men can manstrate. Then we talk about uh, breatharians. It's this new diet people are doing or lack thereof. And uh, we talk about how <laughs> stupid it is. If you're considering doing this. It's made up. You're probably an idiot. Uh, listen to this episode to find out what we really think about it. Also, this month, we got a great promotion going on this month. Enroll in any program, any MAPS program or bundle, and you will get access to to our forum absolutely for free. So if you're you're just getting started off and you'd like the foundational strength program, enroll in MAPS Anabolic. If you are somebody that's interested in overall mobility and athletic performance, well, the program is MAPS Performance. If you want to get on a stage and look your best or you want to train for a particular event and you're aesthetically driven, then enroll in MAPS Aesthetic. If you want a program that doesn't require you to go to the gym, you enroll in MAPS anywhere. Enroll in any of those programs, you get the forum for free, including MAPS Prime or MAPS Prime Pro. The place to get these programs is mindpumpmedia.com. Everybody put your hands together. Hey. For Baby Cakes Justin and his new song, his new song, Run and Starve. All it takes, girl. Run, 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 starve yourself. <laughs> run, 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 starve, <laughs> starve. Run, 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 starve. Dang, it's no, a song it that he wrote. Yeah, we were uh, we, he was on Instagram and he we were it was looking, better earlier. He was looking at uh, some popular uh, fitness people. Yeah, and um, it's just terrible. It the just came to him. me. It just came and he to was, me. He was singing about all they ever teach is to run and starve. That's, I mean, it. That's pretty much the formula, right? And he made up the song it's that the formula. was really good the first time he did it. Run, 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 starve. Did you, did any, I, no, it's not, it's not good anymore. No. Did either one of you get to the, the post I saw this morning on the forum? I was just about to answer it when we were getting ready to do some work here where someone was asking about her her running dilemma she's having. No. Did you read that? No. Oh, damn. I almost want to read. I think it would be a good topic because uh, she's probably not alone. And I saw um, she wrote quite a long post. I did see some several people. Don't you hate it when like you make a joke and then immediately feel bad because there's something that's like, you know, struggling with that? <laughs> with what? With, <laughs> I, like, I totally made you like, feel Oh, yeah, I feel like a fucking dick With now. running Thanks and starving? Lot. Yeah. Yeah, it was totally a joke. Yeah. yeah she's yeah, don't not. Don't do that. Well, no, that's what you're saying is don't do that. I know. I'm yeah. just saying. Yeah. Just uh, putting it out there. Let me find it here. Let me find it here. Let me find it here. Could you give us a general no, synopsis? No, not really. Mm. <laughs> Synapse. Well, I think this is a great Synapsis. time to, to segue to the side effects of marijuana usage. Oh, stupid. One of the number one yes. <laughs> side effects is memory loss. This forum moves too <laughs> fast. Dude, you can't keep up with it. I got CTE. <laughs> Adam has other problems. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't have s- chronic <laughs> traumatic encephalopathy. No. How many, so how many times Did I do say you? In, in, in encephalopathy? Yeah. How many times do you think you check this thing a day now? The forum? Did yes. you see that latest uh, 10, 15 study? I, it, was ha- it has to be 111. What? The uh, cases oh. from the NFL. You know from how ups- many had CTE? How many? 110. Wow. Yeah. What? Yes. Wait a minute. What what they do? They did it like autopsies of 111 people who died? Um, you know what? That's a good question. I, but I, they tested 111 yeah, they players. Tested, yeah, 
and 110 of them had signs I'm of, pretty sure it was just a test. I'm not, I don't think they did autopsies. Of CTE. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Yes. That sucks. Either way, were it you, was alarming to somebody <laughs> like me who's got their head bashed in for were, like a decade so or like, so. So like when, like, I don't, know, 50, I don't know, 20 years ago, were you like a, a brilliant linguist? Oh, 100%. <laughs> I had like the best stories. You know what I mean? <laughs> you were a great storyteller? Like everybody would just gather around and there, somebody would make a fire. <laughs> I would wear this like special jacket, like a smoker's jacket. Because you're you're a you're a yeah. you're a very intelligent guy. I love working with you because you're a very very smart guy. And what you're telling Thank me you. right now is this is what we're experiencing is retarded, Justin. You <laughs> yeah, were smart man. before. I'm telling you guys, I was Holy on another shit. level. You must have been. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was and like, a good storyteller too. Yeah, story people, yeah, people gather gather from you know the hills. <laughs> No, they like somebody would mention, you know, oh, look out yonder. <laughs> Just to tell Justice is about to tell us an epic, you know, tale of heroing conquest. Do you know what I you know what I catch myself A doing? Fire is all you, I don't know if you've ever done this before, but when he tells stories, especially ones that I know, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm wanting him to get the story right so well. Adam's but, always like like revving I up, am, like he's like posturing, I'm like, like, ah, ah, I like am, trying to trying to like, like it up. Like he's at the point of orgasm. I want to jump in and save the like, story up. So I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I know it's a good story. I've heard it before. Let yeah. me help you tell it. I have, I, I have I a bad habit of sometimes think- I lean on people for that. Mm. I have a bad habit of thinking this in my head when people tell a long story. This is what I'm thinking in my head mm. to make a long story short. Yeah, and to make a long story short. I just keep saying that over and over again. Like, yeah, you can quickly. We well, have to be it. engaging with it, right? Mm. That's, that's you say that trick. when somebody else is telling you a story. I'm thinking that. I have said that too. Like people will tell like a long story, and I'll stop them in between, like. <laughs> it's yeah. So to make a long I story short, I just go. Short, it's all, it, it's, you know, it's all about how you tell the story, though, right? Like if you can engage people for a long time, even if it takes a long time to get to the point, I think it's okay. It's when you ramble. Yeah, it's when you ramble. It's bad. Mm. Yeah. yeah, who's yeah. the ra- I, I ramble? I know I ramble. Mm. I sure. think you and I both ramble. Yeah. Do you? He's a rambling man. So I told Katrina the other day. We, you and I, got interviewed the other day, right? Oh, um, and you were trying to see who got who rambled more. No, she asked me. She I'm asked, always making a competition. <laughs> I'm the most rambler. Who's the ramble? Let's have a ramble off. Isn't that, is that a car? Was there a car called a rambler? Tumbler. No. Yeah. There wasn't a rambler. Yeah. Rambler. Was there? That just sounds. Sound it just sounds like a small, squirrely car. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind of quick, but not fast. Mm. It's like a rambler. Anyway, sorry, sorry, Adam. You, there uh, was there was no rambling going on just now. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was a high guy thought. Katrina was asking me about um, take it over, high guy. Uh, our dynamic on the radio, right? And she goes, you know, you guys, you guys don't practice. You don't do any of this stuff. Like, how do you know when to talk and when not to talk? And was it really hard for you when you and Sal did that interview the other day? Because she was asking about it, right? And she goes, was it really awkward and weird? And I was like, no, no, it was totally fine. And I said, uh, you know, Sal and I were uh, on the same page, you know, and she goes, well, what do you mean? I'm like, well, there I, I've now done so much time with both of you yeah. that I know and I know them so well. Right. So I know I can tell when Sal is just feeling filling dead air mm-hmm. or he's actually making a solid point. So when he's making a solid point that I think is really powerful and people should hear and they need to hear. We pump the brakes. I, of course, I keep my mouth shut. And then uh, normally it's very natural conversation, so you don't have to do a lot of thinking. But every now and then, I'm not sure if he's done. But then I'll catch him rambling for a few minutes, which it sounds like rambling to me. But for average people, it probably sounds really good because he has that gift. But it's really I know he's filling dead space. Like I go like, oh, he's circling the wagon and like repeating Mm -hmm. himself now. Like now I'm going to interrupt him. I just know immediately when you're going to search for a word. And I'm already like going through my Rolodex ahead of time, you know, to help you. So I have that ability. Yeah. So what Adam is trying to say. Exactly. <laughs> Calculator. You know, a, I'll just throw it out there. He's a rambling man. Yeah. I mean, but I, you know what though? If someone doesn't pick up on it, I have a bad time and I, I will, I'll keep going and going and going and going. And sometimes I know. Yeah. That, you'll say the same thing, but in a different way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, that's Which is actually the hall. I do the same thing. It's a hallmark of a good salesperson because mm. the goal the is echo. to communicate this one fucking idea. And if you didn't get it this time, I'm yeah. going to tell a different yeah. story that says the same. That's thing. why I said that's, that's what's uh, referred to as circling the wagon. Right. Mm. So I just keep, that's what I but mean. Think by, about that from an educational perspective. You know, somebody's not going to 
digest it completely, you know, the first time around. And then Adam's going to come in and hammer that point home and boom, it, you know, it makes sense. That's why it's effective communication, yeah. right? It's like, I'm, I'm going to tell you one way. Hopefully just, I picked up a majority of people and then it. another way and then another way. And then yeah. it's, it is, it's the very same process. It's like you say a point and then someone goes, no, I still disagree with you. No, you no, go, okay, you're wrong. Okay, but check this out. Wait, what about this you, angle? Yeah. So about it's this the one? same This angle. is what led me to tell her, like, because I was telling her like very confidently, right? And she's like, you don't know that much. That's how it goes. I said, absolutely. Absolutely, I can totally break down. Uh, you're, like, okay, what you're doing is you're breaking down what happens <laughs> naturally. <laughs> yes, yes, right. Yes. It's what happens naturally, and you then just afterwards, explained that, and you came in and reiterated. Just right, said, so you fox. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but what what it is though is we share a dick, when, you guys. When I told, you guys, I told her sometimes we're really on fire, and sometimes we're not. I said there's absolutely times where. We're just off a little bit, and sometimes that could do with one of us and our energy. If so, one of us uh, has got a lot on their mind outside of here and coming in, then then it's like we're just a tiny. We're still on, but it's off, right? And I said, I give an example is what will happen when we're on. Like I, th- I was telling her this interview for this, for example. That's what we're talking about. I could tell we were on. Was it was just you know fact after fact after point after point at, of, of each person back and forth seamlessly without any break. Uh, at all without either I think losing anybody either by go going too deep too far overwhelming people and I said when that happens I think it's really it's really neat and I can always tell and then there's other times like I said when you know if I and I know it when I do it I know I'm like fuck you know I, sh- I should have went in when I thought I should have went there in has ever been dead air on this show just right there, there. Ah, <laughs> yes I knew you guys were going to do that discipline oh, God damn it. well played sir I swear to God we're uh, all uh, we're yeah. all connected I wonder how many lifetimes we've lived together mm. <laughs> I was definitely a warrior I, I think you were our kid <laughs> <laughs> I was the best kid. Uh, we were, you know we're I mean? so I was proud the of you. Performing yeah. kid. We were so proud of you too. We're like, oh, I know. he's the best kid. Just ever. nurturing me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, just feeding me you from de- your bosom. You definitely have your father's uh, glutes. Uh, you don't have my glutes. Well, do you guys not which agree? One of you is. Uh, do you not agree with me though, Sal? Do you ever? Do you ever? I know you listen. Totally. You go back and you listen, right? Can you tell when? When that energy is going, or right after an episode, when we do something, it's right? it's I we, I've called it. Uh, if people will say chemistry or whatever. Um, it was the first day we all met. We all sat down, and it it just worked out that way. And probably the most difficult thing for like Doug to do when we are doing something is to try to like rein us in because we just go and um, it's our it's our strength. It's also can be a weakness, but Absolutely. on a podcast, it's a strength because what what are you supposed to do on a podcast? You're supposed to talk and go off on tangents and discuss things and elaborate on things and go deep on things. And, um, afterwards you can analyze it, but while it's happening, it just, it just tends to happen. You know what I mean? As soon as, as soon as the headphones go on yeah. and then the microphone goes you can on, analyze it real time and yeah. talk about it. It's just, <laughs> it's it just a good, it's just, yeah. a, it's just a great time. Well, yeah. it, it also, f- our strength feeds into, I think, and here's where luck always plays a role. I feel like in business too, is that, you know, it's lucky at this time. I think that the, whole being transparent message, you know, and that, that is on the rise and it's a real soon here. It'll be the norm. Oh right? dude. It'll yeah. be the, it'll be the norm because you'll have to I'll tell you what it's, it's so much uh, more liberating, you know, like, it, like the stress levels are way down when you can just like be who you are and not put up this whole facade and everything. It's just like so refreshing. Well, if you think I about wish it, more people would do it. If you think about it, that's our weakness, not being real, You're but right, trying right. to be fake because if let's say a company, I don't know, came on board and was like, hey guys, I love your show. You guys are going to be huge. We're going to pay you guys millions of dollars, but here's what you're going to talk about on Monday. Mm-hmm. Here's what you're going to talk about on Tuesday. Here's what we're going to plan everything. Yeah. You have to look like this. You have to say that's that. Like nails on a chalkboard. We would suck. Yeah. We would be a terrible podcast. 100%. We're, it's very much like we just have to do our thing. Because we even tried a couple times where we have a podcast up and we're like, yeah. okay, this, this is what we're talking is about. Is the formula? Yeah, and it just just we're like, yeah. all of a sudden we have loss of words. Uh, uh, yeah, don't well, know what to say. <laughs> like that's gonna happen. I know. <laughs> exactly. Doug, bring on the Yogi motherfucking bird, please. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. 
For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MindPump for 20% off at checkout. All right, our first question is from Mark Wolves. Is there such thing as squatting too low? Get that butt you low, squat girl. Too low. <laughs> That's, low. You know low, what? This low, is a good low. question because I know that we talk about this a lot, and you know we've all been working towards it. I know those that have been following my journey, I've been working towards this. But I do think it's important to note that it takes uh, it takes time. This is not something that you just go do. Like if you haven't been squatting low your whole life and never stopped, because most of us were doing it as toddlers. And then as we've gotten older, we've lost that ability to squat really low. So if you kept that that entire time, well, then you can go as low as you can possibly go. But if you're somebody who has lost that over years and years and years, you don't go from, I can barely break 90 to, oh, I, I see the guys at Mind Pump talk about going deep, deep squats. I'm going to go right to doing deep squats. Like you need to be able to work mm. up to that. The short answer to this is yes, you can okay. squat too low. If you squat below where you ha- or lower than your body has the ability to control with good tension and good stability and good mobility, you have squatted uh, too low. The idea with exercise and range of motion with exercise is to constantly train within and test the edge. You want to dance on the edge. You want to find your edge. You want to play with that edge. Get better at the edge. So that that age- strengthen that end range so, and express it further. Exactly. So it moves further, and then the next time you work out, That's you why can it move takes, it. It takes time, and mm-hmm. and it not only does it take time, but it's actually a difficult thing to manage if you're a performance oriented uh, individual. Because Adam and I have both hurt themselves because we felt good going lower and doing better. You know, I I just did it recently. Like mm-hmm. I'm now completely focused on mobility and range of motion for my lower body. Uh, I talked about it on a previous episode and I tweaked my knee because uh, I didn't listen to this particular piece of advice. I got excited that I was able to do this assisted pistol squat and get down all the way at the bottom. I was there. And then the next day, I didn't even feel it while I was doing it. It was just the next day I went to go run. I got my nephew visiting right now and I'm like, oh shit, my right knee is a little tweaked and that's, that's what happened. And so I squatted too low. If you tra- the, the the key remember that here's the thing there is this ideal form an ideal range of motion that you're looking for but there's also the ideal range of motion and form that you can do at this moment both of them are different so if I take somebody with limited range of motion or or, or a problem with their knee or their hips or whatever there is an ideal range of motion for them right now. There's an ideal form for them right now. And it doesn't might, may not look like the perfect eventual long-term range of motion and form, but it, it's what's going to work now. It's what's going to get them there uh, the safest way and the most effective way. There's a real easy way to test this. I mean, we've, we included this in MAPS Prime. When you, if you take a, a PVC pipe, you know, so you don't need, you don't actually, if you're, all you have to do is take a, you know, five foot long PVC pipe broomstick or, broomstick, or yeah. broomstick, whatever, whatever, run it down your spine to where it's touching in three places behind your, uh, your Nodule head, of your head. Yeah. yeah. Behind your, behind your head, your low back and your mid back, you should be able to maintain those three points of contact all the way to the bottom of your squat. And wherever you lose any of those three points of contact, that's your range of motion. That's your, your range of motion right now. You know, because that you want to be able to maintain those three points of contact as deep as you possibly can go, and as soon as you and you as soon as you break down in form, you'll lose it in one of those three areas. That's why it's such a great test. Yeah. So that's a really easy way to see: Am I going too low? And where it, exactly where that point is at? It'll be right where you lose the contact to the PVC pipe, and this is why mm-hmm. we included this in prime. In uh, prime is so one you could assess, and then from there. When you break down somewhere, so let's say, for example, like I already know where I would break down at the very bottom of mine, uh, I start to lose my my thoracic mobility and I get a slight forward head. So the top of the PVC pipe separates from the top of my head. That tells me that I need to address things in zone one. So we split the body up in zone one, zone two, zone three. And I know that when this 
disconnects from the back of my head. I need to address these movements to help me. So this is yeah. why we did that. Well, let's talk about that too. Like if you do lose connection, kind of what that means. So like as you as you go down and let's say like all of a sudden now I can't maintain like core being involved and in, in I'm relaxing, I'm arching my back just a little bit. Just think about that, like – when you're in a situation doing that with a backloaded squat where you can necessarily do it, you can get through the rep, but now all of a sudden now your, your core is a bit disengaged and you're utilizing, you know, your, your joint to, to absorb a lot of this force. Whereas, you know, the most effective way, like if you could stabilize your spine better, it's going to like improve the overall performance and you're going to be in a safer position with that. So, so I can already hear people right now who are thinking, yeah, but you know, I don't know if my form is perfect. But if I do it all the way down, it doesn't hurt. So maybe I can do it all the way down. It doesn't because since it doesn't hurt, it's not a problem. That's why. That's the, that's that's, the, that's also not that's also not the case. Like that's why the test is important. The test is important. That's one of the reasons why the test is important because once you hurt, I mean, pain is an easy one to read. The harder one to read is just you've got poor recruitment patterns. And what you need to understand is what you train, you strengthen. Okay, I'm going to repeat that. It's very important. What you train is what you strengthen. So if you're doing a, a, a squat or any kind of a movement and there's a recruitment pattern that's less than ideal, that's the pattern that you're going to strengthen. That's the one you're going to turn into your normal pattern. And it's a good idea to train within or at, within those edges and keep moving that edge further and further and strengthen good patterning because that's easier than erasing bad patterning. You don't want to develop. It's very difficult to take someone who's been squatting for, you know, week every single week for years poorly all the way down. You know how hard it would be to correct that person's squat? It's very, very difficult because yeah. it's like I gotta I gotta like erase that old pattern, reintroduce a new one. It could take a it could take a year before that person gets comfortable or even longer doing a you know a better, you know, better positioning. So definitely can squat too low, stay within the your edges. Bump those edges slowly. Uh, good control, good stability, good mobility will determine how low you well, should go. Well, just think about quality over just like trying to hit a marker. You know, like, like is everything, like do you have all those checkpoints accounted for? Quick commercial break, you guys. We keep getting asked all the time, how can I support the Mind Pump family? Here's one of the best ways you guys can. You guys love that Chimera Coffee that we have. Chimera Coffee with a K. You go to ChimeraCoffee.com. Put in the discount code Mind Pump for 10% at the checkout. Also, if you guys want to know how I have this luxurious beard and you want one too, go to BigTopBeardCompany.com. Put in the discount Mind Pump again, but this time for 33% off. Also, you guys, if you guys have not tried Ben Greenfield's new bars out, they're fantastic. If you want some, go to BenGreenfieldFitness.com forward slash Nature Bite. Put in the code Mind Pump and get 10% off. Go check it out. All right. Our next question is from Fierce Phoenix. Do you think it would be Fierce. better for women to eat and train according to their cycle? Great. That is an interesting question. I'm, great. I'm an expert on this yeah, topic. Yeah, great, actually. great question. I used to no, I used to tell clients to like load up on the spinach and the uh, raisins and banana and stuff all around around period time. Mm. So this is a. I used to hand out to my ladies like this, uh, this, this big salad, this big salad uh, recipe I had put together. Why are you laughing, Justin? I don't know. I just <laughs> listening to Adam in his period time. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Adam, you go, ladies. Here's yeah. here's a cornucopia uh, of. Uh, you know, it's funny. Adam that's, is not known is for his cooth. This is the this is the this is the difference between Justin and I for sure. Yeah. Justin would be like, sorry, I can imagine so a client trying to talk yeah. to him about his period and be like, "Fuck that, we ain't talking about that." Where uh, I'm listen, like, I would totally uh, sit yeah. down and like, let's talk about this. Well, the difference between me and You're you, right? I don't talk about. As I'll be like, so around uh, the time of your menses, that's how I would say it. Yeah. And Adam's like, is it period time yet? Let's period talk about nutrition. Time. It's <laughs> period it. time. You're right. Yeah. Have uh, a banana. Here <laughs> you go. Whoa, whoa. Good. For, that's uh. So here's the thing. Uh, should it? Does it make a difference in your nutrition and exercise? Definitely. Absolutely. You're having changes in hormones in your body, and things are happening in your body. You're losing uh, a ton of red blood cells, right? You're, 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 you're losing, obviously, blood, but you're also having changes in hormones like progesterone and estrogen that are designed to make you uh, first more fertile, and then now you don't have, you know, now you're, you're, you're getting rid of what you didn't use, and your, your body changes throughout this entire um, uh, cycle. So training and nutrition can change. Now, I've had good success with female clients around 
their period uh, in some very easy to remember basic ways. One of which is, now we always advocate uh, undulating your calories, okay? So what that means is whatever your calorie maintenance maintenance is, let's say you eat 2,000 calories a day and that keeps you where you're at and you're happy where you're at. I don't ever recommend people always eat 2,000 calories a day. I recommend some days are way under 2,000 calories, some days are 2,000 calories, and some days are way over. And I recommend undulating because it tends to prevent this metabolic adaptation where people's metabolisms tend to slow down. It's also psychologically beneficial because people have days where they eat more, which is great because they get to eat more. And there's also days where they have to eat less, which is great because it resensitizes their body to certain foods and flavors and tastes and all that good stuff. Um, And so with women during their cycle, uh, I'll tell them, let's have you eat more on those days when you want to eat more because that definitely happens. Their appetite will definitely go up at certain times uh, during this period. And so I'll say, hey, those are the days we're going to bump calories. Now, you can only imagine how fucking happy they were to hear that shit because uh, for some of them, it was a struggle to maintain their food intake when they're having you know strong cravings or, or just more hunger for food. The other thing is uh, I would also have women, uh, many times I would recommend that they supplement with evening uh, primrose oil. Evening primrose oil is one of the few things that has proven benefits uh, to prevent things like cramping um, uh, and just overall general uh, fatigue and malaise during um, PMS uh, and during their period. And lastly, depending on uh, the, the, the female and how heavy her cycle was, I would recommend sometimes that they would take a multivitamin right around the time when they were actually having their period. I, I, would, I never or really rarely ever uh, recommended people take Now, what's take the multi- whole multivitamin? What's the theory behind nutrient it? Nutrient loss. Well, of course, nutrient. All the nutrients, though? You know... Um, I would think like iron and things like that, but why Why everything? You, you, think, you would think iron, but iron's an interesting one to supplement with. You don't really ever want to supplement with iron unless you're... Well, I don't iron. think you supplement. That's why I said the yeah. comment about the raisins and the spinach. I normally make sure they're getting a lot of iron in their diet going into that around that time. Yeah, no, it's uh, more, more so because of just general nutrient loss. And this is anecdote, by the way. There is no evidence to support what I'm saying besides evening primrose oil. There's evidence to support that. But with the multivitamin, I just noticed anecdotally that with women, uh, uh, with female clients, my ex-wife was like this as well, that when they would take a multivitamin while they were on their period, they felt they, they would just start to feel better mm. and they'd have better color in their face because sometimes you'd see like the paleness thing uh, going on. As far as training is concerned, uh, always listen to your body. <laughs> And one of the things that, uh, in my experience, I've trained a lot of people, so I've trained a lot of men and women, and a lot of women would experience um, uh, anxiety uh, right around the time of uh, uh, their PMS or their period. And so the training would change accordingly. So I would have them, and I would the way I would uh, tell them about this is I'd say, look, you know what things you can do that make you feel better when you're anxious. What are they? And they would list them. You know, from an activity basis, like, okay, yoga makes me feel better. Um, Meditation makes me feel better. Walking outside makes me feel really good. I'd say, okay, we're going to replace your other forms of exercise with those things. And as far as resistance training is concerned, when you come in here and lift weights with me, we're going to focus on form. We're going to focus on range of motion. The the routine is going to be much slower. Um, We're going to avoid, sometimes I would avoid direct core work because they would feel uh, bloated in, the, in their midsection, which would, of course, reduce activity of the core muscle. So why am I going to target the core when the, we're just going to end up solidifying a, a strange recruitment pattern, one that is not ideal? So I would avoid direct work. And, you know, so we would end up slowing things down. So, um, but this speaks to, it, it, this doesn't just speak to women. I think the ultimate, uh, or at least the 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 underlying theme here is, is what? Listen to your body. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. Is that advice any different for men? You know what I mean? I mean, right. Yeah, if, if, I, if I had a, the same thing you just suggested, it would be the same way I would treat like maybe a client who comes in to me who's an older guy, who's a business guy, high stress level, low back pain. So you're going to avoid the area that's, that's bothering him. It doesn't make sense to stress that area out. You're not going to do something super high intensity with that person because they're already stressed to the max at work. The first time you're going to do work with them, that's not ideal. That's not what's going to really help them. So. I mean, it's really learning that. I think that's the the true art is is helping people. And we talk about this on the show all the time is 
that relationship with yourself, that relationship with exercise, and then that relationship with food, and then becoming aware of it. And that's the first step. You know, I was actually breaking this down in my uh, hairstylist yesterday. She was at, she needed like some words of wisdom. She said it with her health and fitness journey. And that this is what I gave her was the, you know, the relationship. She's all oh, I, you know, I said, well, you know, you say that, but when you look at certain foods and she does this all the time where she'll talk about a food and she'll be like, I don't want to have that because that'll make me fat. I'm like, well, that's not a good relationship with food when you say that. And I, oh, I know I don't really mean, I know, but you do, you keep saying that. So think about that for a second. Like you are connecting that food with you either being skinny or fat when it shouldn't be that way. It should be about how it makes you feel and how it nourishes your body. But you first have to learn how to connect those dots before you start to look at food that way, which you first have to start by looking at yourself differently, right? Like you always say so. Yeah, I, I'm, uh, I'm glad you said that. You know, it, it, kind of an epiphany that I've had lately talking to um, some of the gut health experts we've been around, like Dr. Ruscio and the gentlemen's from uh, Thrive Podcast, um, which uh, I, I don't think will be aired when this is up yet, but that'll be coming up soon. Um, I've had a few epiphanies talking to them because we're discussing things like hunger and appetite and cravings. And I'm reading all these studies about how if you lose sleep, now there's several studies that show like if you're slightly sleep deprived, you end up craving, you know, foods that are higher in sugar and foods that tend to be processed. And if you're depressed, these are the things that tend to happen to your appetite. And so I'm thinking to myself like, okay, these are easier to test types of things. And then we're talking to Dr. Ruscio about the body signaling system of thirst and knowing when to drink water and how accurate it actually is at regulating how much water you need. Hunger is really the same thing. And the problem is that our bodies are so out of whack with sleep, uh, with activity, with our connections to people, with our thought processes, um, especially in modern times where everything is so in our face all the time. Go, go, go. Nobody ever shuts off. Nobody ever has a second to themselves to, to where it's quiet. N nobody knows how to sit by themselves. Um and our nutrition is all over the place and sleep and all this other stuff that it, of course we deal with food problems. Like, of course we deal with all these issues because our signals are fucking all over. They don't reflect what they truly should reflect. We've thrown them all off. And so what, what the epiphany I had was, is if you place your body in a state of balance, and I hate to say balance, but that's just the only, that's the only word I can think of, of balance from a, from a whole uh, perspective, everything, emotional, Spiritual, you know, uh, you know, nutrition, sleep, food, all that stuff. Then there is no diet. There is no activity. You are your body will literally tell you what it needs, and it it's a very good gauge. It will tell you when to stop eating. It will tell you when it's time to enjoy this glass of wine and this piece of cake because I'm in a social setting with these people that I'm connecting with. It'll tell you when uh, it's time to move hard and fast and train a different certain way. It'll tell you when. Right now, I need to relax and let my body recover and rest. It'll tell you when I sleep more. It'll tell you when you need to sleep less. All these signals become very accurate and very clear. And I'm starting to realize that really the key to long-term fitness and health is learning how to hone on those and understand those because then it's just you living. You know what I'm saying? It's no longer like watching what I need to eat, what I don't need, what I got to do here, what I don't want. To do. There's so many levels to that. So bro. many levels. I love when you say it. So like, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's easy. <laughs> yeah. There's so many deep. The, it, it takes so many levels of awareness because many times, and we talk about paradigm shattering moments, right? you you will your paradigm will be shattered you will there'll be things that you were doing that you thought you were doing right there'll be do, things that you said a certain way that you realize oh that's really not me or there's things that you said you never would do that you end up doing because you know it helps you like so much of that happens in that journey of figuring that out well you know about what? yourself that you have to be open to that and another thing that i mean and one of the reasons why i'm at where i'm at with this is uh i read a study who posted it someone on our forum posted it where they had uh overweight uh people either do a structured diet or just practice practice mindfulness every day mm -hmm. or they had a control group that did nothing. The mindfulness group did Killed better it. than everybody. Whoa, yeah. wait, 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 explain the study yeah, again. Yeah. Wait, there's three so groups. They had three groups. What was it? What are they studying? What are they, what's the test? Weight loss, uh, fasting, glucose, weight loss, and blood markers of health. Okay. And so one group, All those were separate categories or yeah. just in general? No, How separate. Did, okay. So they took uh, three groups of people they used one as a control, so they said, don't do anything, we're just going to monitor you. Okay. 
Then they took a group and they said, you follow this diet. Like we're going to give you a structured nutrition plan. Okay. Then another group where they taught them how to practice mindfulness, which is like meditation, right? Where every day they had to sit down and do this, this practice of mindfulness. The mindfulness what, group. What was that? Was it like just saying a chant to themselves? Like I am valuable. I, like I, actually, it, I actually. I should not put bad food in my mouth. Like no, 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 no. I, uh, learning how to become the observer. Learning how to become present. Um, I don't okay. know what their methods were, but I would assume it's a form of meditation. Okay. Um, they did better than the other groups and they speculate it's because they made better food choices and all that stuff because they were in a better state of mind. Fucking crazy, right? And it's, it's so mm. funny because I, mu- I think- How much back better to though? The psychology. What was the, yeah, what was the- I'll, I'll look at the study again. In yeah, fact, yeah. we'll post the link in the show notes. But, I mean, was it, were you surprised? Like, holy shit, like big well, time? Or was it because- I, I was, uh, what, surprised me, what surprised me was two things. One, I literally brought that up five episodes ago. I said- I would love to see a study that's like this, and then lo and behold, the study actually exists. But the thing that surprised me is kind of what we've been thinking and talking about, and now they've got a little bit of evidence to show that that may be the case. We need way more more studies, way more control groups to see if this is actually the case. But I would venture to say, man, you fix the mind, you fix that psychological piece, and then everything else kind of falls falls into place. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Oh, we had a great. Who was uh who who. What was it? Alvin? Alvin with Ben Pikulski. Simon and Theodore. <laughs> his, oh no, his his buddy Alvin. They go back like twelve years. Had a good time. I mean, that was that was uh, what he was talking yeah. about. Yeah, he, I, that's Ben has him for that exact reason. I believe. I believe he's hired him as a a full like. Yeah, he's really insightful. He goes deep for oh, sure in that podcast. Big time, yeah. big time for sure. Our next question is from Zachary Watson, twenty seventeen, who hates treadmills and ellipticals. He and his wife play basketball, tennis, and volleyball. How do those activities compare? That's a good. Uh, that's a very good question. It's a good question. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically, he's active uh, outside doing things he enjoys versus getting on a treadmill and elliptical, which he fucking hates. Right away, just so you know, too easily we can do a whole list of pros and cons of both. Easily. Yeah, I could sit here and on a comparison to comparison basis, if I factor out the fact that he likes one and hates one. Right. Yeah. Then I could show you why one's better than the other and you know, okay, basketball, tennis and yeah, volleyball. Yeah, you look at like yeah, yeah joint health that's and it. all that yeah. kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, cuz basketball, tennis and volleyball burn more calories but the more dangerous yeah. and the other ones are easier but they burn less. None of that matters. No. The only thing that matters here is that you like to do stuff with your wife outside mm-hmm. and you hate doing your treadmill and elliptical and you're elliptical. active constantly. So the one I'm going to tell you to do is the one that you like because that's the one you're going to do. Now that being said, if you're asking this question because you want to know how they compare, because does one of them burn more fat or burn more calories? The one that you don't do all the fucking time is the one that's going to burn the most calories, burn most fat. Because I get this question a lot with somebody who's like comparing you know, cardio uh, forms. For the last three years, they play basketball Monday, Wednesday, Fridays in their league, and volleyballs on Saturday, and they've been doing that for three years because they love doing it. They're in leagues and all this shit. And they come to me and they want to lose 15 pounds. And I say, hey, I need you to get on the treadmill for an hour. And they go, oh, well, I play basketball on Mondays for an hour and Wednesdays for an hour. Like So that is already factored into your norm, if that's your norm. And if you're wanting to know how they compare as far as burning fat, well, if you never get on the treadmill and the elliptical ever to train and all you do for your, uh, you've done for a long time is play basketball, your body's become very efficient at playing that sport. So you're now good at basketball. You're good at tennis. You're good at volleyball. Mm-hmm. The body is not having to work as hard as it used to have to work. If you never get on and do treadmill sprints or get on and do a Stairmaster or do something like that, it will be different. It'll be a different adaptation for the for your body, and so you will see greater change aesthetically by and, doing. And that. here's well, this would be interesting. Actually, would be comparing groups of people. Here's another cool study: would be comparing groups of people who did the same amount of calorie burn and same amount of in, in cardio, but one group constantly changed their cardio. Uh, they, and they have the it. study. Uh, so this is how the study goes. So it's there's three three groups. One group uh, does something different every single day. One group does exactly the same uh, same thing uh, for four weeks. It was four weeks or eight weeks. I can't remember how long this. Time. I think it was eight weeks. Sorry, like eight weeks. And then the other one changed it every two weeks. The one that changed it every two weeks 
saw the most, but barely outdid the person who changed it every uh, every single day. And then the one who mm. saw the least amount of change was the ones that Fuck, did Fuck, I'm going to try and find that study. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, no, I read that a long time ago. Yeah. That, that That's where you hear me come up when I tell people that like your body gets adapted to cardio within about two to four weeks. Mm. So I've said that before, and that's where I get those. That's where those numbers come from. I know a lot of people probably think I just pull shit out of my ass because I don't remember. I can't remember studies like Sal does. I read them somewhere though. I promise. You know, <laughs> page reference. I hate when people ask me exactly. They're like, "Could you uh, tell me?" Adam, Is it a that? PubMed? <laughs> yeah, we're, 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 I'm yeah. like, I'm sorry, dude. You, I wish coming up through my 20s, I was like, as I was reading <laughs> stuff, I was like, oh, I need to put this uh, to the side, like Sal yeah. did. File oh, it away damn, in that, that was brain. A men's fitness article. Remember? Oh shit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, here's, pro- here's I promise other, I'm not top touting, touting 2017. Here's the other thing too. Uh, th- there's all there's a lot of benefits that you're getting from basketball, tennis, and volleyball that have nothing to do with the activity. It's the fact that you're enjoying time with someone you want to be with. With the, right, with and it's outside the sun. There's a lot. That's what I'm saying. I, I mean, can, you're I, getting a lot of great health benefits. I from could that, write a whole list of pros and cons of both for sure. Yeah. The, and Sal said it best. The best answer is which one do you enjoy doing most? And it's outside with your wife. That's a no brainer. But I also think it's important because this a lot of times when this question is asked, it's yeah. the why they're asking is because they want to know if they they need to do that in order to lose body fat because that's what people are telling them to do and they like playing basketball or doing these sports problem is your body is pretty efficient at that you're not going to see much aesthetic change if you've been doing that for quite some time quick commercial break hey people ask us all the time how they can support mind pump here's what you can do uh, you can go to www.brain.fm forward slash mind pump and get 20% off Brain FM for meditation or focus. You can also go to audibletrial.com forward slash mind pump and get a 30 day trial plus one free audio book. Lastly, you can go to getnatureblend.com forward slash mind pump and you will get a discount on Ben Greenfield's CBD product. Our next question is from Joe Bag of Donuts. <laughs> Yeah, it's good old co- Joey. There's my cousin again. Yeah. Please talk about breatharians. <laughs> People who eat and drink I didn't nothing even, but air. I didn't even think this was a real thing. Why did we, this one? So, I, I here's why I didn't want to answer this uh, <laughs> uh, when we first wrote this question up. The reason why I don't want to answer it right away is because I don't want to breathe life. Stop. I know. Oh. I don't want to breathe life into suck the air out of you. some bullshit uh, that is going to get people killed. Okay, so there's there's people online. There was an article that was written. Um, I think the Guardian wrote it. That should tell you enough right there. Um, and it went viral, where this couple says that they barely or don't eat at all, and they survive on the energy of the universe. Yeah, man. Um, and they said that all they ever have is like a tiny bit of soup. I think once a month or never. And it, they've been doing this for years and years and years. And they live because. I guess they they're like plants and they can just yeah. go outside and and absorb sun energy and convert it you know through photosynthesis which doesn't exist in, in, yeah, just, in mammals. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. There was there's actually a story of uh, I believe there's a few people that have died trying to do this. This is when I'm okay with that. Actually, in fact, if you think it's a good idea to survive. <laughs> With no eating and water, go ahead and do that because we could use less people <laughs> like you. In the world. Uh, I mean, dude, that was so wrong. I know. Yeah, I people actually, people actually did. It's mean but true. People actually fucking believe this and then push themselves to the point of death. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I just don't. Yeah, like when you're getting all the signs from your body, like ah, I'm eating everything in my, you know, muscles and everything. Like, dude, like come really, on. you get, you can't tell me that you're there was power through some that? serious miserable days leading up to dude. that death. That's what right? I'm saying. It didn't happen. It's not like when you when you starve to death, it's not like yeah. all of a sudden. That's a long process. That takes yes. a long it's not like getting shot with torture. a bullet. It's yeah. like, <laughs> it's like you know, energy. like day seven of almost dead. <laughs> you're like universe. Where are you? Maybe it hasn't been sunny enough. I'm not using the energy effect. Like, <laughs> yeah. It'll yeah. happen eventually. So I just know honey, it. Honey, breathe. Just breathe. Yeah. Just keep yeah. breathing. Yeah. Doesn't this? How do you coach somebody like that? God, this tells you the the psyche of the human mind. How powerful we are at fooling ourselves so much that we'll literally fool ourselves to starving to death because we think. I mean, it's how good for? I, I mean, you'll yeah. save a lot. I, I could see the. I could see the. Uh, the pole of this, I can see the. Why How big is like this it. community? It's not yeah. like it's no. not flat. Flat it's, Earth community. There is no. Size, there is right? no community because <laughs> is it that big. So. The community died. They're dying <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, no, <that's> <laughs> they're, they're, they're getting yeah. blown. There's in the, only in three the wind. survivors. They've yeah. only been doing it for three months. Dude, here, here's like I'm reading about one of them. 
Of course, she lives between California and Ecuador. Wow, why does California have How these How many fucking, ribs can you see? And they have two kids. Please, don't tell me this is... You're actually, of course no, they're not doing it. I'm looking at pictures real. of them. It can't be real. And they obviously eat. Yeah. Okay, there's no way. But it says here that... <laughs> what does that mean? They, because they, they don't look like... Like, if I looked at a picture of them thick. and they look like death, I'd be like, ooh, maybe they're doing something. Like, right. that's, that's what I would expect someone to look like if they didn't eat any food. No, they look fine. Uh, this is like the guy who doesn't take shits. Yeah. Universe Twinkie, oh. thank you. Wow. Yeah. Look, look at this. They're just like sneaking them in. This is a quote. This is a quote from both of them. Uh, humans can easily be without food as long as they are connected to the energy that exists in all things and through breathing. Well, see, that's where you're wrong, bitch. You don't need to breathe either. Energy will just just hold your breath yeah. and the energy will sustain you. Then it says, <laughs> for three years, my husband and I didn't eat anything at all. And now we only occasionally, like if we're in a social, social situation. And then this is the wife. Right? With my first child, I practiced a breatharian pregnancy. Hunger was a foreign sensation to me. So I fully lived on light. And ate nothing. Ooh, light. So they actually did some research into this couple, and it was like the the biggest uh, troll of all time. Like they did this. This was like all bullshit. Oh uh, yeah. And media went crazy and circulated it and made it a thing when it's not. Mm, of course. Yeah. There's a few. There's a few things. Wah, wah, you got wah, me. Wah. It's like an article in the Onion. Wah, and you don't wah, realize wah, the Onion wah. wrote it. Ah, yeah. yeah. oh, I love those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those are my favorite. Yeah. Trump is deporting all women. <laughs> yeah. Holy yeah. shit! Oh wait, it's the Onion. His knee jerk. Like yeah. yeah. It's uh. Oh, gosh. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, people get fooled. People are yeah. People can be idiots. It's um. It's funny because uh, things go viral and then people start believing them. Um, but I'll, I'll tell I you mean, what. You can fast for a long period of time, but you can not go f- years, dude. Exactly. Get the fuck out of yeah, here. So like, I bet maybe, you maybe forty days, forty like, nights. Yeah, if, if like, they would have been a little more reasonable about that. Yeah. yeah I wonder. Like I wonder if forty some, days. I wonder if some people are like they then buy we, into yeah. it and they're like, okay, let's see how the first two days goes because I don't know if I can yeah, survive. Right. And they make it two days. They're like, oh, I'm surviving. There's something to this energy off the universe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not realizing humans can yeah. go quite a while without food. Actually, yeah. one of the there's a few things right. we know in science to be totally true about human metabolism. One of them is this: you need to eat food in order to live. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That That's is it. a fact. We'll leave it at that. And taxes. Check this out. Mind Pump is offering 30 days of coaching for free. Go to mindpumpmedia.com. Register yourself. Again, 30 days of coaching for free. Also. If you'd like us to answer a question that you want to ask us, the place to ask it is on Instagram, and the page to ask it on is Mind Pump Media. Finally, we all have personal Instagram pages. Come take a gander at them. My page is Mind Pump Sal, Adam is Mind Pump Adam, and Justin is Mind Pump Justin. So just the other day, Sal, you brought up uh, Art of Charm, man. And it had been a while since I had been on his podcast just because we've been so busy with all the podcasts we were doing, all the traveling we're doing. So I love to listen to Jordan, in my opinion, one of the, if not the best interviewer. And he's always got incredible guests on there. And I know you were just listening to the KGB guy not too long ago. So I get on there and I'm scrolling through and I find Tim Grover and Tim Grover... I know I knew that name. I'm like, I start looking through all the notes and he was one of the guys like that was helping out with Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, Dwayne Wade. So he's been in these, some of the greatest athletes. And I know you don't know all those, mm. <laughs> all those athletes. Episode, yeah, yeah, I know. Right. Yeah. I know you don't know all those athletes names, but right away I was drawn to that. And man, what a killer episode. And I'm here with Jordan right now. We have him in studio with us and I just wanted to get a chance. Jordan, you got to tell these people what it was like to talk to this man. This guy is intense. I mean, his book, first of all, is called Relentless, and he he's like, I don't know if I can even make this comparison, but he's kind of like the Gary Vaynerchuk of sports, right. although Gary Vaynerchuk mm-hmm. is like the sports guy of business. But he's really intense, and you can tell that this is why guys like Kobe, Michael Jordan, call him when they need to be at the top of their game. And he really talks a lot about what closers and coolers and cleaners do. These are like these three archetypes of high-performing athletes. And he talks about the concept of relentlessness, what it is, what it involves, that it can actually be taught, and that each of us has a trigger that puts us in the zone, which is great. And the really fascinating thing that came out of this episode, in my opinion, was something called the dark side. And this is what he's talking about when like Tiger Woods gets busted banging you know, escorts, when all these other high-powered athletes get busted or get caught doing some shady, shady stuff, often having to do with sex or money or whatever. 
he says that the dark side is not just this side effect of being successful in life or sports or business. He said it's almost a requirement not to be a bastard, but to have this sort of like side of yourself that is not wholesome that is just gritty and it's not a side effect of success it is part of what makes that person so intense that they can get it done on the field or in on the court and that to me was a uh, worthy of discussion we spent a lot of time talking about the dark side how to how to harness it not let it control you so i i love this episode with tim grover yeah, he, a- me- he mentioned some cool stories about michael jordan and uh can you go into that just for a second <laughs> oh yeah so he one of the stories about jordan that was funny and, and took me i asked him about this and how this works jordan used to go into michael jordan used to go into the locker room of the opposing team so it'd be like you know pistons bulls in the 90s or whatever he'd walk into the locker room of the pistons and and he'd pretend he was saying hi to somebody you know he'd be like oh what's up man just want to come and say hi and he'd just walk around their locker room like he owned the place (laughs) so of course you know if the coach is talking or the players are talking or they're warming up stretching and getting ready he just walks in like what's up everybody you're in basically you're in my house this is what's and now they're thinking about him they're not thinking about the game and this is all deliberate and michael jordan talked about this after he retired about how his performance would start before he would get in the car so he'd only drive like a washed car even if it's raining to the venue get out say what's up to a few fans dress to the nines he's not wearing a custom three-piece suit when he wakes up and he puts that on gets in the car takes it off immediately and gets ready it's just it's a performance from when he gets out of the house and it doesn't end until he goes home and he talks about this in detail on this episode so badass so badass episode 636 make sure you guys check that out that's on iTunes obviously you're listening to a podcast right now all you have to do is search Art of Charm thank you for listening to Mind Pump if your goal is to build and shape your body dramatically improve your health and energy and maximize your overall performance check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.